Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride up upon the heights of the earth, I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead him away to get water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In her temporal life, she is regarded as little consequence. 
Considered almost invisible, she was a washerwoman who eked out a meager living by washing hands, washing clothes by hands. Now in the kingdom, she is herself clothed like royalty in dazzling white gown with a tiara and attended to. The woman is not simplistically the reversal of her former life, but rather the fullest expression of the child of God known her to be and how she delights in accepting and growing further into the newer and fuller self before God. She is but one character from C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. This book challenges our notions of what we've considered to be about heaven and earth judgment. And rather than a label thrust upon us, it is about our own revelation of who we truly are, our whole self before God. In heaven, not necessarily as on earth. The challenge is that we tend to want to make God's kingdom and the way of life based upon what we do and how we do things on earth. It is as if we are all too often trying to reverse the line from the Lord's Prayer to be in heaven as it is on earth instead of the other way around, which Jesus gave us. When we come to this part of Luke's telling of the good news, we encounter Jesus being challenged as to how to fit this new teaching as his critics see it into the life we've come to know and are familiar with and depend upon. The life we try to create and control ourselves, the life bound by societal standards and customs alone. And Jesus keeps demonstrating that it is this newer life that is not meant to be con contained in that old worn out life, but rather be transformed with how we live on earth. Which is why our Lord's Prayer says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But this is hard work. Life as a disciple of Jesus calls us to constantly re-examine ourselves and dare to expand how we have seen ourselves and our world around us. It asks us to do more than what we're accustomed to with how and whom we do things. Life as a disciple is not about what we have come to expect by ourselves, but rather what we allow God to reveal to us if we want to put God's plan into our own expectations. It won't fit. God's way is simply too big. But that means a constant discipline of asking to see how God sees. To hear as God hears and then to act in response to what God is revealing, not by and just our, to ourselves and what is familiar and even comfortable, but God's revelation into God's action. This is, I believe, what is at the heart of Jesus' words for our gospel story we hear this day. The leader of the synagogue is extremely limited in his view and regard for the Sabbath, reverting it to making the Sabbath about ourselves, what we do or don't do, even more than God, the subject. Yes, it has become a societal standard to regard the Sabbath in terms of what it is described in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible that reserves the Sabbath as a day of rest, but is that, that which is described to Jesus, the way in which God told us to honor the Sabbath, as in the fourth of the Ten Commandments? What does it mean to honor God? That's what Jesus is asking. You see, even by Jesus' day, the rules become something we quibble about and interpret for ourselves. Ourselves. Surely it is okay to do this, or that is all right. But in this rather short, pithy, and direct exchange, Jesus redirects the conversation entirely. What's more important, the custom and ritual, or is there something more at stake? What is the intent, after all, of Sabbath, of honoring God? You see such quibbling as the leader of the synagogue is accustomed to doing misses the point of 
why we do it. The Sabbath is to honor God with the best of who we are. It is more than being clever. Jesus is piercing the veil. Or more importantly, breaking down walls and penetrating once again to the heart of the matter, our own soul as well. You see, Jesus then takes it one step further, seemingly challenges that our customs seem to care more about the beasts of the field than for a daughter of Abraham, the very heir of the promise of God for a full and complete life. Is this how we honor God? So I guess we're left with the question, what does it mean to honor God in the Sabbath? We have the benefit of a deeper perspective from our first reading this day from the prophet Isaiah, who says, if you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord. Eugene Peterson's transliteration of Isaiah has the message declare, don't use my holy day for personal advantage. If you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration, if you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here or there, then you will be free to enjoy God fully. This is the kind of day of Sabbath I'm after to break down the chains of injustice, Isaiah says, to get rid of exploitation in the workplace, free the oppressed, cancel debts. What I'm interested in is seeing you do this. Share who you are. Share your food with the hungry, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families and just yourself. The Sabbath was never meant as the object of our worship but the discipline to honor our relationship with God and thus the other children of God along the way. What better way than to serve, to heal, to reconcile, and to help one praise fully as we see Jesus doing in this passage? We are more than what society can see alone as disciples. There is a newer, fuller life we are each called to share into and become still in the fullest sense of how God sees us, how, what God is revealing. And as such, we have the invitation to grow into that life of love, offering who we are and what we can do so that we will do in God's name as we honor God. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The Prayers of the People are Form 6, found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Wayne, our provisional bishop, Ken, Nettie, and Wendell, our assisting bishops and all bishops, for Darren and Heather, our priests, for all deacons and for the ministry of all the baptized, for all who serve God in his church. We pray also for those whose needs are closely linked with ours and for those who suffer from any suffer, sickness, grief, or distress, especially those on our parish prayer list. Carolyn, Dick, Dorsey, Ella, Jim, Josephine, Lily, Lisa, Mike, Natalie, Scott, Sherilyn, Steve, Susan, Ted, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of Ukraine at this time. We pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world, and especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. I invite your own names and concerns offered either silently or aloud. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here or abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, Perrin, and Tony, for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Let us pray together for our Stephen ministry, saying, Risen Lord, you have commanded us to love one another and commissioned us to make disciples. Help us as we live into the fullness of your call to new life. Give us wisdom and clarity as we prayerfully consider your call to serve and seek the most effective ways to bring your healing love to those in need. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. I invite your thanksgivings offered either silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
using the prayer adapted by our national cathedral. A spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion physically. As we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light unto the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.